Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. Today I'm inside, I'm in the kitchen, and this video is all about how to make awesome honey wheat um, sourdough bread. So I talked about this in a previous um, vlog. I think maybe I mentioned it and I got plenty of comments saying, hey, please show us how to make bread, show us how to make bread. So today I'm gonna show you how to make sourdough bread um, with the simple recipe that I use. I usually make a loaf a week for my family. And so I'm gonna take you along the journey and show you exactly how to do it. It's super, super easy. If I can do it, you can do it. So let's go. So the first thing I want to preface with is um, I have tried to bake bread for a few years now. So I've tried to bake yeast bread, have not been successful, right? I've tried it a couple of different ways. I have a bread maker. I've tried it in the oven. I've let my KitchenAid need it. I have needed it. It hasn't quite worked out, right? So either the, the loaf was looked pretty, but it didn't have the, the right taste or texture, or it had a great texture, but didn't look good. Like it was just, it never all came together. And when I say I've been trying for a few years, let me also say I've tried, I would say maybe five times. So not like 10 times, but I've given it a good five time try and it just didn't work out. Not to say um, that I can't do it. I'm still gonna try again, but in the process, or I should say in the process, about, I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago, I saw somebody making sourdough bread and I'm like, huh, I never had sourdough bread. Um, and they were just talking about making it. And so one of the things that just intrigued me, I wanted to try it. So I just wanted to do my own sourdough starter and try it. So this video is not about how to make your sourdough starter. We're going to start working with making this bread with a sourdough starter that I already have, right? Um, so if you want a video on how to make and how to get your sourdough starter, I'm happy to do one. Just leave me a note in the comments, right? Because for a lot of people, that can be the challenging part. And I'll say for me, it took me two times and I got it. So the first time, it didn't work well for me because I used the wrong type of flour, but I used the right type of flour the next time. And within seven days, I had me an active sourdough starter. So that's what I'm using is my own sourdough starter that I started and I've had it for at least, let's see, it is April. I had it since November, so about five months. Um, and I've made many of loaves of bread with it. I've made focaccia. Uh, what else have I made? I've made pancakes. I've made waffles. So again, it's active, you know, and all of that stuff. So if you want a video on that, I can definitely talk about that. But today I'm going to be making um, honey wheat um, sandwich bread. A lot of people that do sourdough do the, the round, the boules, um or whatever. I did start with that. But practically for my family, we eat more sandwich bread than we do like cutting, you know, a slice of the boule and just, you know, trying to make it work some kind of way. You know, we just like toast and sandwich bread. So I found a recipe that has been my go-to that I'm going to share with you guys. It turns out fantastic. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. The other thing about sourdough is that it is sustainable. What do I mean by that? It means when you think about um, prices at the grocery store or when they're out of stock, right? So when the whole pandemic happened, it was hard to find yeast, right? And so when you're making traditional yeast bread, you need yeast. Well, with sourdough, you only need flour and water, right? And so it is more sustainable than yeast bread, meaning the ability to make it. So let's get started um, and I'll show you the first few steps. Okay, so I have all my ingredients. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is three fourths cup of active starter. And so I'm gonna pour this into my measuring cup. So you can see that's the active starter. I have to see if I can show you. And those who know sourdough, you know active just means that it's, you know, it's active, it has the bubbles and it's ready to go. This is ready to go. I probably should have got a better shot, but this is ready to go. So it's three fourths cup of starter. Now, if you don't have your own starter and if you are intimidated 
about making your own starter, you can actually buy a starter, right? So you can buy a starter from like bakeries, they sell it. Um, yeah, bakeries would probably be the best place to get it or you can order it online um, as well. So if you don't want to even attempt or you've attempted and have been unsuccessful, there are still ways to have great sourdough bread. Um, the next thing you're gonna have is a cup of warm milk. So this is um, soy milk, just because I don't drink milk. <laughs> Um, and we don't drink milk in my house. We always have like some soy, rice, or almond milk. But that was um, a cup of warm milk. And again, I just put it in the microwave to like get it to room temperature. You know, a lot of times with bread, bacon, it's all about temperatures and not putting things really, really cold. So that was actually a cup plus um, two tablespoons. So again, in bread making, the measurements can be really, really exact. Um, then we're gonna get two tablespoons of warm water. So let me get that. Okay, and I just put warm water in the cup that I already had. So that's two tablespoons of warm water and I will link the recipe down um, below in the description. And then you're gonna get two tablespoons of honey. Now y'all, I'm using this honey that I just got from Azure Standard. It's the Berry Wildflower. Um, I have not used this before in my bread, so this is something new. Um, I usually just use regular raw honey, but because I like this honey, it tastes so good, I wanted to see what it tasted like in my bread. So I'm gonna try it for the first time. So two tablespoons of the honey. That's one. Now, let's hope that this still tastes good because I'm switching honeys. You probably shouldn't switch and change the recipe when you're doing something live on camera, but hey, we'll live on the wild side. Why not? And again, it's not like you guys are gonna actually be able to um, taste it. I'll be able to tell you how good it tastes. That honey tastes so good, y'all. And I'm not a honey person. So I'm excited to see how that turns out in my bread. Okay, and so then you need two tablespoons of oil. So I just use grapeseed oil because that's what I use at my house. Um, and grapeseed oil is a pretty versatile oil. So again, it hasn't affected anything that I'm doing. I probably wouldn't use like an avocado oil or something like that, but any oil should be fine within reason. So we have the oil and I'm looking at the recipe just to make sure I don't mess anything. And then one and a half teaspoons of sea salt. So we're gonna do well, I take that back. Um, so first, okay, so we got all the wet ingredients first. So then we're gonna just mix this up. I usually use a whisk or a fork to just kind of incorporate it all. My whisk is on the other side of my kitchen, so for now we'll just use a fork. This is just kind of to incorporate the oil, the honey, and the starter. That's all that it's doing, okay? And so then we're gonna add the flour. So it takes three cups of bread flour. And so my starter is made out of bread flour. I'm measuring the flour. So that's two cups. I wish y'all could be here to taste it once it gets done uh, because it's gonna be good. Okay, so that's three cups. Okay, so that's three cups of bread flour and then you're gonna get one cup of white whole wheat flour. Okay, so then that's the whole wheat flour, one cup. And y'all, that is it in terms of the ingredients, right? Simple and easy. So think about that. We had flour, the starter, which is nothing but flour and water, oil, honey, um, oh, we forgot the salt. <laughs> So glad. So again, <laughs> as I was going through the ingredients, I was like, wait a minute, I didn't put salt in there. I don't think I did. Let me grab my measuring spoon. So it's one and a half teaspoons of salt. That's right, because remember, I was gonna put the salt in there um, and I didn't because I needed to incorporate the wet ingredients first. So one and a half teaspoons, which is the same as a half of a tablespoon of salt. Now, see y'all, if I would have forgotten the salt, I would have been thinking it was my honey that made it different. 
but it's not. So that's the salt right there. Okay, so that's all the ingredients, just like that. And so most of these things you're gonna have at home. Now, if you don't bake, you may not have bread flour, but I bet you have all-purpose flour, right? And I haven't tried it with all-purpose flour, but I'm assuming it would taste you know, decently the same. So now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna mix all of this together. You're gonna mix it all and get every piece until it's all incorporated. And y'all, I'm hovering over the camera trying to make sure I don't bump it and it doesn't fall into my dough. I couldn't figure out a way for you to see me and the bowl, right? Do you see how I'm getting it all together? And you can see it looks kind of shaggy, right? That's the way it's supposed to look. So I'm getting all the remnants, getting all of that in together, incorporated. And then you put the, the, the thing down and then just start working it with your hands to get it all together. So I'm gonna do that now. It's a bit awkward just because of what the way I have the camera and I'm having to like reach over um, the camera but basically I'm gonna bring all this together as much as I possibly can to where there are no remnants okay y'all so you can see it's shaggy at best right but it's all together let me see if I can lift it up so you can pretty much see as I'm handling it, that it's all together. Everything is off the sides and this is the way it looks. So this is gonna be the first rise, for lack of a better term. And then from here, we're gonna cover it with a damp tea towel. So this is one that's already damp and you're just gonna cover it for 45 minutes to an hour, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna leave it for 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so guys, I wanted to show you the book. So this book is called Artisan Sourdough Made Simple by Emily Rafa. I'm not affiliated with Emily. Emily's not my cousin, right? <laughs> so I'm just telling you this because this is what I've used. It's the only book I've used. And again, I'm new into sourdough. I just started about, like I said, in November, so five months ago. But this book has been great. So it explains everything and it has pictures. Y'all, that's what an active starter looks like. Active with all the bubbles, right? But she explains everything. There's a couple things I wanted to show you. That sourdough at a glance, right? In this book, um, is also in my store as well. So you can get to it from my website, which is down below. Um, hopefully by the time you see this video, the website will be, um, up and active. I think it will be. Um, but it has things in here, instructions about how to use your starter, how to do it, what happens if it's not getting right, how do you bake your first loaf, which I use that to a T. Um, what else? This is, again, it has pictures that shows you what to do, what it should look like, how to score it if you're doing a boule. Um, the other thing, it gives you, there's a section about how to shape your loaves and what to do. So you can make bagels. There's a bagel recipe in this book. There is brioche in this book. There's focaccia. So let me show you the focaccia I made that was... If I must say so myself, it was out of this world. I, you thought you were eating at like an, a famous, fancy Italian restaurant. My husband loved that focaccia. Let me find it. Do, do, do. There's a recipe in here for pita pockets. There's a recipe for rolls, for English muffins. So, y'all look at that. Do you see that? That's rolls. Where is the focaccia? Oh, this is the one I did. I made this, a basic no need focaccia. Um, I had made like, I think some like fettuccine alfredo or pasta or something like that. And we had it with that. Y'all, it was so, so good. And I used garlic from my garden. I didn't have any rosemary that day, so I couldn't do rosemary. But y'all, 
So good, so good. So if you're into sourdough, want to be into sourdough, if you're just beginning like me, get this book, um, Artisan Sourdough Made Simple. And she really does make it simple. So we're going to um, let the bre bread rest for 45 minutes to an hour. So I was trying to find a better angle that you guys can probably see. And again, this is hard to do one-handed because I'm trying to get the angle and hold the bowl up so you can see it. But basically, I mean, we're talking 15, 20 seconds. I'm just moving it around, kind of tucking it up under and pressing it around. And you can see here, it's getting more smooth, right? So you just want it into like a semi-smooth ball. So you should be able to tell the texture is much different. It went from shaggy to now the dough is much more supple. And of course, it's going to get even more supple. But that's basically all you do on this step. So 15, 20 seconds, get it around in a semi-smooth ball. And then you're going to pop the tea towel back over it, damp. And also, you guys can't see this, but I have it on a heating mat, the same kind that you use for like seed germination, because it's kind of cool in my house just because the temperature is um, not as, sorry, the temperature, <laughs> the temperature is not as um, hot today outside. So it's kind of cool in my house. Um, and so I'll pop it on a heat mat just to kind of speed up the rise or just to kind of give it a certain level of heat. So this is now the bulk rise stage. So I'm going to leave it covered like this with a tea towel for, I don't know, five to seven hours. So that's one thing about when you're making bread, right? You can't say I want some bread and in two hours you're going to have bread. That's not the way this works, right? You have to be thoughtful. You have to be planful. Um, and this is in the middle of the day. So I'm actually about to go get my son from school. So this is in the middle of the day. Um, I normally start the bread in the morning when I first get up, but when I first get up, I probably wasn't as presentable on camera. So I waited to show you guys. Ah, that's how much I love you guys. Right. Um, and normally, um, like I said, either I'll do it in the morning or I will do the step up into this point the night before. So what you saw me do the first part and wait the 45 minutes, I'll usually do that maybe an hour before bed. Do this 15, 20 seconds into a ball. I'll go to bed. And then when I wake up in the morning, it's been seven, eight hours or whatever the case may be. But it's in the middle of the day. So this may have to be a two-day video. We'll see, depending on, you know, how fast and what my schedule is like this evening. But basically, it's just going to be uncovered here, excuse me, for, you know, roughly between five to six hours. And you're waiting for it to double in size. That's basically what we're looking for. So I'm going to go pick up my son from school, run some errands, do all the things, right? And we'll come back and check in um this evening okay okay guys it has been exactly five hours um since we put it in here so let's take this off and you can see that it doubled in size so you can see and obviously you're not here where you can feel it but it's really really soft so i'm going to take it out and show you the next step so um i have just like a pastry sheet here that I'm going to put some flour on. I'm just going to sprinkle some flour. That's just to help it not stick. And then I'm going to gently lift this out of the bowl. So we're going to put this here. And the first thing you're going to do is just press to get the air bubbles out. But you can see how soft this is. And because we're making a sandwich shape, we're going to just press this into a square or a rectangle. You can use a rolling pin, but that's just one more dish for me to wash. So, wash, <laughs> so I just use my hands um, and it turns out just fine. You know how when you first do something, you do it exactly like the recipe says, but then you're like, look, I know a little bit. I don't have to use a rolling pin for this. I can just use my hands. So you see how I'm just pressing that out into almost like a square. Should be able to see that.
Okay, so you can see that pressing it out into a square. And then we're just gonna fold the ends like this inward because we're making a loaf shape or sandwich bread shape. So you're just gonna fold the ends in like this. So I kind of just go up on all sides. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see how I'm just kind of making it into a log shape like that. And then the, the direction say just let it rest for like one minute. So usually while it's resting, I just go and get my loaf pan and spray it. So I'll go do that now. Okay, so I have my loaf pan here. It's just a standard size loaf pan. It is stainless steel. I have a friend, her husband actually makes these stainless steel pans. Um, great, great, great quality. So that's what I use. And then it's been resting for like a minute. Then you're just gonna kind of pull it to you, right? And again, there's no exact signs, but basically I'm just firming it up, tightening it up to like let it get its shape. And then you're going to just flip this over, seam side down. So this side that you see on top is going to be on the bottom and just put it in the pan. Now, um, normally you would take a bench scraper and kind of lift up under it to put it in the pan. It just makes it easier. But I cannot find my bench scraper, so I just do it by my hand. Is it perfect? No, but it gets the job done. Okay, and then I get it in the pan and again... you can kind of see how it's in the pan, right? It'll kind of flatten itself out. So here's a shot of it in the pan. Like I said, it doesn't look pretty, but trust me, it will be at the end and it will taste good. There's another shot of it. And so now we're gonna do the final rise. So guess what's next? You're gonna cover it again with the damp tea towel and then that's the final rise before it we put it in the oven to bake it so i'm going to pop this again on the heat mat just to kind of speed things up and again this is evening when i'm doing this normally my bread is already in the oven and done by now so that usually again depending on the temperature of your house um, the directions say, you know, between two to three hours, I'll tell you, probably because I just keep my house cooler than warmer. It usually takes mine about, I don't know, four or five hours. So it usually takes mine like four or five hours to um, get to the top. And so what you're looking for is that you want the loaf to rise to the rim of your loaf pan. That's what we're looking for. Now, the directions, again, in the cookbook says two to three hours. And I'm sure that's the case if... Um, Got this hair in my face, sorry. If um, your house probably stays in a warmer temperature, I'm putting mine on the heat mat because I'm gonna see if I can get the two to three hour. If so, then I'll bake it tonight and let you guys see that. If not, and it's still going, and before I go to bed and I don't feel like it's ready or I don't feel like the time to wait, then what I'll do is I'll put it in the refrigerator and then I'll bake it first thing in the morning. Now, one of the things is I have done that before. Um, a time when, when I just kind of lost track of time or whatever. And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to bake my bread. It's too late. I don't want to stay up. You know, can I put it in the refrigerator? I Googled it. It said you could. And it turned out just fine. Just fine. So putting it in the refrigerator kind of slows down the proofing process um, to where, you know, it won't be overproofed, you know, or too tough. And so I've done that before and it works. Again, the thing about sourdough bread is that you cannot think, you know what? I want me some sourdough toast and whip it up and have it in an hour. No, it's a, when I say it's a 24 hour process, usually at the earliest, you're going to start in the morning and you'll have bread that evening. Like that's the soonest, but it's not going to be where, oh man, breakfast is in two hours. I want to make me some sourdough bread. It doesn't work that way. So that's the downside. If you want to say downside, you have to plan and be planful. So in terms of me, I usually bake bread on Sundays. And so like on Saturday night, I may do the first step that I showed you guys, let it do the first bulk rise. 
And then when I get up on Sunday, I'm doing the step that I just showed you. I'm um, shaping it into the loaf and then letting it rise, you know, throughout the day while I'm working in the garden or whatever. Then I bake it that um, Sunday afternoon or evening and then we have bread for the week. That's typically my schedule of how I do it. But I have done everything in between. OK, so one of the things is, again, I've probably baked this. This is probably maybe seven, time seven or eight, maybe. So it's not a ton, but it's enough for me to tell you that, again, don't be so focused on it has to be the exact way. Now, I'm sure there's some mistakes that you can make, but I'm telling you, I started off doing the recipe the exact way in terms of the time of day and the hours. Okay, do this at night, then do this in the morning. Okay, and now I'm transitioned to I do it, you know, in a day sometimes. And like I'm doing it now, I started the whole process at what, like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and so it's about almost 8 o'clock tonight. Um, and it's going to do its thing. More than likely, I'm going to go to bed before it's done. So I'll put it in the refrigerator. It'll get to the top of the pan. And then we're going to bake it for, I think, 45 minutes. And that's it. And we'll have bread or toast. I can easily have it by in the morning. So um, that's the step that we're on now. I will definitely let you guys see the final step, even if it goes into day two, I'll let you see the final product. But y'all, it's pretty much easy. So you saw the recipe. The recipe will also be down below. Um, so it's not hard. Um, and again, it's time consuming, meaning it takes a long time, but you don't have to be involved a long time, if that makes sense. So again, once you get the hang of it, you just kind of plan your day. So again, when I've been popping in to show you where we are, you know, because I'm talking to you, you know, it may take, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. But otherwise, I mean, you mix up the mix, you come back in an hour, you um, take the 15 to 20 seconds to make it into a smooth ball. You go on about your way, right, for four or five hours. And a lot of times <laughs> that step can be done before you go to bed, right? And so now it's going to take three or four hours. I'm going to go and do something else. So even though it takes a long time, it doesn't mean that it's taking a long time with you. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, thank you if you're still hanging in there with me. Uh, we'll see the fin finished product in just a little bit. Okay, guys, this is three hours later. So you can see how much is risen. We only have a little bit more to go before it's at the top. But I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. You can see it there. So I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And you'll see when I wake up in the morning, it'll be at the top. Literally, if I if it wasn't so late and I stayed up probably um, another hour, it would be done and ready for the oven. But I don't feel like waiting. So I'm going to pop it in the fridge. And I'll show you the next step on tomorrow. Okay, guys, the bread is done. It's the next day. It's the next morning. I forgot to show you before I put it in the oven, just wasn't able to pull that together, but I baked it at 375 for 40 minutes and now let's take it out. Okay, this is the bread. So um, the next step and final step or next to final step is you just brush it with some butter on top. Again, I guess that's optional, but um, who wouldn't want to put butter on this? So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to um, put it on a cooling rack in about 10 or 15 minutes, let it cool, and then we can have toast this morning. Okay, y'all, it's been 10 minutes, so you leave it in the pan for 10 minutes. Um, well, you first take it out of the oven, and then you just put it on a cooling rack to cool completely. I've um, brushed the top with butter. Y'all, doesn't that not look good? Yay! Yum, yum, yum. Y'all, I'm telling you, fresh homemade bread. Y'all, look at my loaf. Yes, before I let you go, I'm going to cut it. So when you're cutting bread, you want a serrated knife. That's what it looks like. Like that. And we are going to slice a piece. Look at that. Look at that. That's the end piece. Then we're going to put some earth balance butter on it. Now I could put this in the toaster, but I don't have time. And just to show you, 
demonstration. So you can put in toaster and toast it. That's with the butter. Yum. We'll just put the rest of it on top. How about that? Then I'm gonna take this grape jelly that I made, and there's a video on that on how easy it is. Remember, this is the grape jelly from um, Michigan, Concord grapes from Michigan. The grapes are from Michigan. I made the jelly. And we're gonna spread it on there like the Oh, y'all, some jelly dropped on the floor. Okay, let me hear up and do this because I gotta get on with my day. I gotta get on with my day. Okay, so normally I would put more on that. I would toast it and all that, but. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all, that's good. You see that? Let me not talk about my foot. Just like that. I wanna thank you guys for going on this journey with me yesterday, this morning, baking fresh sourdough honey wheat bread. Yum, yum, yum. And again, I talked about in the beginning of this video that this is a can be a little bit more sustainable than yeast bread. And again, that's just because it starts off with flour and water. That's it. You don't have to have any yeast. So if there is a yeast shortage, then you can still make bread for your family. And then furthermore, if there is no bread in the store, whether you're making sourdough or yeast bread, learn how to do some of these simple things at home. I also did a video last year sometime about how to make homemade milk. So y'all think about with the craziness that's going on in the world right now, the grocery store supply chain, you go in the store and you can't find anything. That's on a bright summery day. Let them announce no, and you really can't find anything. But what are the top two things that always go when they announce some type of weather event? It's bread and milk, right? So if you've been following my channel, I've show, showed you how easy it is to make your own milk. Obviously not dairy milk, but non-dairy milk. So I think we did <clears throat> almond milk, or no, we did soy milk in that video, but the almond milk is the same concept. So I've showed you how to do milk. I've showed you how to do bread now. So you have an option to provide bread for your family. And remember some of these things, again, it may not be where you do it every single week. It may be just getting the knowledge and you know how to do it. And maybe you test it, you try it and say, okay, I can do it. And you may keep buying your bread from the store while it's still available. But in case of a pinch, you know how to do it. You have the stuff at home and you can whip out bread in less than 24 hours. That is what it's all about. And I hope that you find this channel helpful to give you those tools and resources to be more sustainable, to be able to grow your own food, to be able to provide for your family and not to depend on Publix, Winn-Dixie, Kroger's, Albertsons, wherever you are in your area, right? That's what it's all about. If you guys like what you're seeing on my video, please subscribe to my channel. Please share it on your social media. That is one of the best ways that you can help me as I try to grow my channel. I want to reach as many people as possible because I feel very passionate about growing your own food, being self-sustainable, and learning different things to help you and your family function more efficiently, more effectively, and better. So please subscribe. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And again, remember, this is all a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time.